Hello, I'm Fiona Graham, Editorial Director at Light Reading. And I'm in our London studios and I'm talking um, virtually to Gabrielle Foglander of Ericsson at Ericsson Stockholm HQ. And we're going to be talking about CloudRun. So just to get started, can you tell me a little bit about CloudRun and why it's key to network build outs? Yeah, thank you, Fiona, for having me uh, and giving this opportunity to talk. Uh, I mean, CloudRun for us brings a lot of interesting possibilities to utilize web scale technologies in a RUN domain. And that gives you know, potential for pooling and continuous integration, continuous deployment and DevOps deployments if you talk the technical aspects. But more importantly, that enables uh, you know, scaling advantages, uh, pooling a p a potential, as well as uh, an opportunity to really look into the automation of the networks today. So we're excited about the possibilities that we'll bring to our existing networks. So how does CloudRun fit into the existing product set? Yeah, that's a very good question. So we see clearly that CloudRun is, is a well-suited complement to our existing Ericsson radio system portfolio, which is an integrated portfolio where everything is verified up front. And, and CloudRun, then we believe we have designed it to be a complement to that, uh, which gives uh, our uh, customers a better opportunity to, to choose uh, and, and complement the, the kind of platform that they deploy with our CloudRun offering. So in a way, we can bring in new benefits to complement the strengths of our existing portfolio. And that's the way we see it. Does this mean um, a large investment um, in new infrastructure or does it plug into existing network capability? Yeah, so the beauty of it is, I mean, since we are part of the Ericsson family here, we, we of course have access to the same radios that we have in the Ericsson radio system. So a huge part of that is, is going to be ability to reuse those radios that our customers have deployed in the field already. And that, you know, of course, it, it, it is uh, the pot potential to connect that to a cloud run solution is, of course, offsetting some of that deployment cost. Uh, furthermore, you can look at some of the synergies on the kind of uh, site structures and the site acquisition and the infrastructure that you need on site. And, and that is, of course, something that you can reuse in the cloud run context as well. And then depending on a little bit on what site you would like to deploy, you will have different location uh, to tap into. Uh, but certainly, if you look at the more specific parts, we have the, the deployment of the cloud infra platform, which consists of a you know, commercial off-the-shelf server and couple that with our, with our containerized deployment, which means that you need to have a cloud platform layer uh, upon which the applications are deployed. So those elements together, that, that kind of is a new investment if you look at it that way. So, I mean, CloudRun has been such a huge topic of, of conversation in the industry um, for the past year, but what does it look in, in, in real life? Can you tell us a little bit about how that's playing out with your customers? on the ground. Yeah, we're having really interesting and engaging discussions with our customers on how they see this play out uh, right now. So we see different approaches emerging. We do see some operators that are looking into a more distributed architecture and see how they can introduce a cloud run in that context. And that means, of course, the deployment closer to the antenna site and puts you know, stricter demands on the kind of dimensioning of servers and the size of those kind of deployments. But there we also believe we have a strong portfolio with Ericsson Radio System today that can serve that segment. Other customers are more looking into an expansion where you see the trend of more distributed data centers moving towards the edge and looking into the potential here to, to kind of uh, combine those deployments and see how can we have synergies and, and find a way to deploy our own software in a data center environment to serve multiple sites, which is a centralized deployment. On top of that though, we also have an interesting possibility to address specific use cases in localized deployments. Here we talk about things like uh, industry applications or enterprise deployments. And, and some of the key things that are critical to, to, to get um, a successful proposition in those segments is to have a simplified deployment and also a, a straightforward lifecycle management and operation and maintenance. And here we believe that being on a uh, commercial off-the-shelf hardware is more similar to what the IT departments today are working with. So we see some synergies from that standpoint, which should hopefully uh, help simplify the adoption of, of these technologies in these industry and enterprise segments. And then maybe an example as well to, to illustrate how this can play out in the, in, in the real life. So if you look at a stadium deployment where you have a huge variation from day to day, if you have a, a game or something where a lot of audience is in, consume a lot of, of uh, mobile traffic. 
that uh, gives a, a peak capacity, which is uh, you know quite uh, uh, sophisticated to handle. But the next day, if you look at that, then, then you have very little capacity needed in the same location. If you then have a, a general purpose hardware that serves this segment, that means that you can use it for, for a run workload uh, potentially one day uh, to serve the peaks and a different workload the other day to reuse the same equipment. So that is one way where you can see kind of the scalability and the flexibility of a cloud run solution come into play. So before we wrap up for today, what's next? Yeah, next is limitless possibilities, I would say. So we're really keen to see how we can bring this technology and, and make it alive in the networks. First of all, we have a commercial release that comes at the end of next year and that will serve the low bands. And then we're, of course, looking into how we can expand that by serving the mid bands where you see more capacity, how we can couple that with the low bands to extend the reach of that mid band and also bring in more network automation features to, to kind of attack that complexity and the cost base that you see when you have more sophisticated networks that needs to deal with differentiated use cases to different segments. So that's what's next. Thanks so much for talking to us today, Gabriel. Um, it's been really interesting. Um, have a lovely day. Thank you, Fiona. Bye-bye.